This is just a quick review of the ideas that I discussed uh, that Harry Carmine applies in his drawings on foreshortening. I just wanted to show you a couple of drawings so you can see how he weaves those concepts in there. He's not obvious about it, but if you start looking for them, you will see them in there. And I know that before you saw these videos, you wouldn't have noticed that. So in this particular drawing, we see the perspective line. Going back, we see a suggestion of it here. We see a lot of activity, consciously and deliberately done, um, in the foreground to create interest. He does it with um, a unique color right here that we don't see anywhere else. We see him do it with stronger um, strokes. And um, he just creates a lot of activity here, and that just makes the eye come right forward when looking at the drawing. He's very careful to include aspects of the environment to orient the figure on solid ground and that helps you read it better too. So here we see him drawing these lines, you know, all over the place, but they're meant to to create more space, get a reading from here and we walk our way forward through the figure onto here. It's even like there's a horizon there. So None of these lines are meaningless. They're meant to help the figure read in a sharp three-dimensional effect on a two-dimensional paper. He even adds this shape, which helps create um, a 3D reading from this form to 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 this form. He creates forms here. And by creating that rhythm of forms, he gets the eye to travel, and it suggests three-dimensionality to you, the viewer. It's very deliberate. This is um, never random, and he incorporates the signature as part of the design, as is often the case in his drawings. So this is an, has some of the ideas I discussed shown very clearly, uh, especially creating interest in the foreground. Now... In here's another one. Um, here we see again the perspective line. We see the horizontal lines going back to place the figure in a setting which helps orient the viewer. We see the mountain like forms. He starts at the very back and then he uses these shapes, seeing them like mountains, and he works his way forward. Remember, you always start at the back. Don't start in the middle, it won't work. Also, he uses tone to separate and define each form from the one that's behind it or in front of it. So tone, um, you don't have to use it, but he uses it to great effect here. So that's why I'm pointing it out. We see a real contrast between the light and the dark uh, uh, tones of the forms. It's very deliberate and it just, one more thing to help the eye read very clearly a three-dimensional concept on a two-dimensional piece of paper. So um, I just wanted to show you, you these two drawings because now that you know what to look for, you can see how he does that. He doesn't do it in an obvious manner. It's subtle. And that's the trick of a master, to, be, um, to create your illusions but without being obvious about it. You just do all the work so when your viewer looks at the drawing, it's all laid out for them and they just get it like that. So these are just a couple of, of examples of some beautiful extreme foreshortening by Harry Carmine.